So these are some of my battery chargers. Uh, I've been building up a bit of a collection. They're all AA and AAA battery chargers and they range from the fairly sophisticated right down to the completely hopeless. So uh, let's go through them and um, look at some of the aspects of AA battery chargers. Okay, so let's start with this one. This is the Uniros Globe Trotter Pocket. It's the smallest of all the chargers. Uh, these things come out and then these springy wires extend out uh, to take four batteries. Now, as far as I remember, this one does charge them individually. Some of them don't. Um, it's a neat implementation. Uh, well, at least it's a good idea, but it just doesn't work terribly well. These things don't make a very good contact. Um, often you're fiddling around trying to get a good contact on those. And of course it suffers from the usual problem, simple red and green light. Uh, it's mains powered only. You get some of these extra adapters. That's UK, that's Europe. Um, I prefer a charger that has a 12 volt option because I like to charge using solar power. Uh, but it also gives you the uh, extra ability to charge in a vehicle. So, not very keen on this one. Right, now this is a very old charger. It's heavy, so it's transformer based. There's really no electronics in here, no sophistication. These lights just come on to tell you that the batteries are making good contact. There's no timer. It won't stop charging uh, when the batteries are full. There's no minus delta V uh, uh, sensitivity there's no uh, thermal measurement, no temperature measurement simple plug-in, mains only, doesn't have a 12 volt option really doesn't qualify at all okay so here's another one mains only, there's no 12 volt option on this and the other thing with a lot of these chargers, it applied to the uh, previous one is that um, they'll only charge two or four batteries, you can't charge a single battery this one has little flip down things for the AAs uh, the AAAs, but again, simple red and green indicator. And like I say, you have to put two in. If you put one battery in, it just won't charge. So uh, another one doesn't really uh, stack up these days. Okay, so now we have these two. These are very nice looking uh, battery chargers. They're by GP uh, Gold Peak, um, who do the Recyco range of LSD batteries. LSD stands for low self discharge. You really should be using low self-discharge these days because they don't drain themselves when they're just sitting on the shelf. They will retain charge for, uh, well, a lot of them say up to a year. Sanyo, with their Eneloops, these are the Eneloops, uh, now are offering up to five years with their third generation. Anyway, back to these uh, chargers. Neat little um, battery eject mechanism because quite often it's difficult to get the batteries out of these things. These have uh, mains input, they also have 12 volts on the 2.1mm uh, socket there. Um, but the problem with these is they're very aggressive. If you look at the back, they charge at 2.3 amps. Well, that's an enormously high charge current. Okay, the batteries are going to charge quickly. These are fast chargers. Well, <laughs> that's good in one sense, you get your batteries charged quickly. They're going to get hot, so a lot of energy is wasted. Um, and the batteries are going to be worn, uh, worked harder, and they won't last as long, you won't get as many cycles out of them. So very nice chargers these, but um, I don't use them because they're just too fast, they're too aggressive. Okay, here's another charger, uh, charges four AAs or AAAs, charges them individually, and this one looked quite promising, this was on eBay, it's got uh, mains connector there, it's also got a connector there, but it's a micro one, it's one of these silly little tiny ones. So you have to get one of these adapter leads. And the trouble with these tiny sockets is that there are so many different types. So if you get the wrong adapter lead, it doesn't fit or it wobbles around. Or, and it takes a while to work out what the actual dimensions of the pin is in there. Comes with an LCD. I was quite um, looking forward to seeing what this would do, but it doesn't really do much. The LCD just shows you these silly little symbols of batteries, empty, half full and full you really want the voltage. The voltage is the most important piece of information. If you have the voltage, you can see where the battery is in its charge cycle. You can see whether it's fully empty when you put it in. You can see when it's almost full and the thing's going to finish terminating. Um, I can't remember whether this terminated well. I think it was reasonable, but I don't use it because there isn't enough information on that LCD. The LCD's wasted, really. 
Okay, this Duracell, um, I think it's out of production now, but it, it, uh, it's quite clever. It, um, well, let's have a look. It's got a 12 volt input. It's got mains. Yeah, mains here on the back. You can plug in a range of um, different adapters for different countries. Uh, individually charges the batteries. It's got uh, minus delta V. Now, minus delta V is where it senses the voltage on the battery, and throughout the bulk of the charge uh, sequence, that voltage increases. But when the battery is full, that voltage dips down a tiny bit, and minus delta V senses that and stops the charging, or at least uh, goes to a trickle charge. But this one also has temperature sensors, so if the batteries get hot, it will uh, terminate early. And it also has timers, so that if it runs for too long, it will terminate. But one of the nice features about this is this USB socket on the front. What you can do is put four batteries in these four locations, press the button, and get five volts out of the USB, and the batteries provide the five volts. Very clever. I don't know why Duracell didn't take this concept on, but uh, I think this thing's out of production now. You can find them on eBay, but um, the other problem is the USB only provides half an amp, which these days really isn't enough. Most things take more than that. But it's a really nice novel charger. The only downside, red and green lights, no information on voltage. You can't really see what's happening with the batteries. You don't know how far they are through the cycle. But I like it. It's nice. OK, now we move on to the chargers that do show voltage. Now, here's a really cheap one. This is a Voltcraft, uh, what is it, uh, something 300, BC 300. It's 12 volts, which is great. But, again, it's a silly little mini connector. So you've got to get one of these adapter cables to get to a proper 2.1 millimeter connector. But it does show voltage. And that helps you work out uh, how far the batteries are through the charge cycle, um, what voltage they started at. They all finish at about 1.5 volts if they're decent batteries, like Sanyo Loops, my favorite batteries. No, I don't have shares in the company. Um, but as I say, this is really cheap, about 10 pounds. The other thing this shows you on the display is percentage charged. Well, that's great. It goes from 5% up to 95% in 5% steps, and then it sits on 95% for about two hours. It's completely useless, but it doesn't matter because it also shows the voltage, and with the voltage, you can make an estimate of where the batteries are in their charge cycle. Seems to terminate pretty well. Individual charging bays, you can charge one battery if you choose, or four or three, whatever you want. Not a bad charger, 10 pounds, very cheap, very small, very light. Okay, now we move on to what I call the serious battery chargers. These are the ones that I actually use. On the left, you've got the AccuPower IQ328, and on the right, the Technoline BL700. Now, this BL700 is also uh, manufactured under the Lacrosse name, and I think in America it comes out as the Lacrosse 900, and that means you can charge it up to 900 milliamps. This one only charges it up to 700 milliamps. But it shows everything on the display. Voltage, current, milliamp hours, hours. Everything you need to know is on that display. Just a shame that when you put the batteries in, it defaults to current. If it defaulted to voltage, it would be perfect. Also, the display is quite small and quite dark. It really does need a backlight. It doesn't have a backlight. But you have individual bay buttons here so that you can set different batteries to do different things, charge at different currents, um, or be in different modes. It's got the full range of um, recy yeah, cycling and uh, testing, so it charges a number of times, checks to see whether the, um, the uh, milliamp hours it got out during the discharge cycle has increased. Um, and keeps going until it doesn't increase and then it says okay I've restored this battery not sure whether that's much use and I mean in the end you end up just popping batteries in and charging them what I like about this is it charges the default current is 200 milliamps it charges very slowly it's an overnight charger now you might want a fast charge but generally speaking that's gonna lower the lifetime of your batteries so I recommend a slow charge just sit it out and wait stick them in the night before and they're done in the morning, generally speaking. Only problem with this charger is that, although it has a sensible 2.1 mil jack, it's three volts. You've got to be very careful to remember that. If you stick 12 volts in there, you'll probably blow it up, and it's not a cheap charger. But it's the one I use pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis, because you can shove the batteries in, 
instantly get the information on the display, walk away, and when it says full on the display, you know they're done. It charges, a, as I said, a very low current. It won't damage the batteries. It's an excellent charger, the Technoline BL700. This one is very similar to the Technoline. Um, in fact, I get the impression that it's identical, but it just doesn't have the individual bay buttons. So what you can do on the Technoline individually to each battery, here, you're doing it to all four. It's cheaper. It does still have the three volt input. It's got to be the same circuit board inside. The display is virtually identical. Um, definitely a second contender, the AccuPower IQ328. Finally, we come to the big one. This is the PowerX Maha MHC9000 Wizard 1 Charger Analyzer. It's an enormous name for an enormous charger. Look how far apart the battery bays are. That means that if you uh, have one battery that's a bit dodgy and it's getting hot, it won't affect all the others. It's an excellent idea, but it is big. The display is big too, but and it's back illuminated, which is fantastic. But it's it's mostly text on there, and in fact, there's only one numerical area which shows voltage, current, and all that stuff, and it cycles around each battery in turn. So if you come up and you want to see what's the voltage of battery four, you might have to wait almost a minute before that piece of information appears on the screen. But it's a very solid, substantial charger. Proper 12 volt in there on a 2.1 mil jack. That's excellent. It takes AAs, AAAs. It does the whole range of functions, more functions than you can imagine. It does discharge, which the Technoline doesn't do. And what I mean by discharge, it discharges the batteries and leaves them discharged. It does cycling. One thing it doesn't do, actually, which the Technoline does, is it won't cycle the batteries until it gets the maximum charge out of them. It just cycles a number of times that you define. That doesn't seem quite as clever as the Technoline. Um, it does a break-in uh, feature where you simply set it to a fixed current um, and it runs for a fixed time. It's got all the features you want. It's the biggest and probably the best, most powerful in terms of features charger that's out there. But I don't use this on a day-to-day -day basis. And the reason for that is because the default current when you put batteries in here is one amp. And I think that's a bit high. That's quite an aggressive charge. It goes from 200 milliamps up to two amps and you can set it individually in 100 milliamp steps. But why default to one amp? It should default to the minimum. And then, you know, if you want an aggressive, more aggressive charge, you wind it up. So I tend not to use it. I use this if I'm testing batteries, analyzing them, doing experiments on them. But day to day, I use the Technoline because it has that 200 milliamp charge, that low current charge, that safe charge, the one that's not going to damage my Sanyo Eneloops. So to sum up all these different battery chargers, and the only two I really use are these two on a day to day basis. I just use the Technoline BL700, pop the batteries in, next day they're charged. For experiments and mucking about, I use the PowerX Wizard 1 Charger Analyzer. Technoline has this annoying 3 volt thing, that means you have to have a special cable if you're working from 12 volts, which I generally do. The PowerX runs directly from 12 volts. Both have displays, both the displays have their problems. Not backlit, bit small, but at least it shows you a piece of information for each battery. This one, backlit and big, but it only shows you one piece of information. You've got to wait until it cycles round. But those are the winners. The PowerX Wizard 1 MHC9000 and the Technoline BL700 battery charger.